everyone. Welcome back, and thank you for joining us on the Live Unreal with Glover You podcast, where every week, Jeff Glover will dive deep into the questions that you are asking. He understands the challenges you're facing on a day-to-day basis because he still works every day on the front lines of real estate, with him and his team closing over 1,000 homes per year. On this episode, we'll go over step 16 in the Glover You Sell system, mastering adaptability and identifying communication styles. In this step, you'll learn from Jeff Glover how to use your personality to adapt your communication styles to close each appointment. Now, let's hear from Jeff Glover on step 16 in the 20 steps of the Glover You Sell system. Mastering adaptability and identifying communication styles. Mastering adaptability and identifying communication styles. I wrote down point number one, we have to learn to speak the customer's language. We have to learn to speak. One of the things when we bring associates on and and people work with us at Glover U, we help them to identify who the other person is that they're speaking to and then speak their language. Every single one of us in the room is one particular style. Now there's different versions of it. You know, I'm sure you're familiar with the DISC test. We use that one, the Tony Robbins, D-I-S-C, right? So we all have a style, and we generally have a secondary style. And in most cases, we become something under some certain level of stress, and that is usually our secondary style. And so it's important that we recognize, of course, what our style is, and know that we have strengths and that we have weaknesses in our communication when dealing with people that aren't the same style as ours. And so one of the things that I'm I'm always been big on is we have to know that our way of communicating is not the same way that everyone else communicates. So when I give the example, I know it sounds extreme, but essentially the people that work with us understand that there are four different presentations for a listing to a seller. There are four different buyer consultations. Again, the script is the same. And I'll get into the material a little bit and what I mean by there's four different. So I wrote, uh, and just follow along, you don't have to write this down. So why do we need this? I wrote down, you don't have to write it down, just listen. You begin to develop communication styles as early as nine months old and we end up developing who we are and how we communicate by the time we are 18, 19 years old. As you age, we can generally become more versatile but the style in which we communicate starts very early. And it's our ability to adapt quickly once we recognize, okay, I am this particular style. Once we recognize the style, we have to quickly identify the opposite of that style, which I'll share with you in a moment, and get good at communicating with that one style. You know, people say, gosh, it seems like it might take forever to learn all the different styles and how to adapt. And my response is always the same. Take the opposite style and just master that one. And if you master that one, everything else will sort of fall into place, and you'll see why in a second. The National Association of Realtors says that a realtor goes on an appointment, they go on four appointments, they get one contract signed. Why is that? Well, remember, most of us sell based on our personality. If we don't have an actual sales system or an actual dialogue or process that we follow or or method every single time, Let's be honest, we're using our personality to sell the customer on working with us. And so there's a reason why NAR says, you go on four presentations, you're getting one contract signed. Well, that's because the world, in most cases, is broken up into four different personality styles. So the one out of the four is the one that you are most like. You you know what that's like. You go on an appointment and you hit it off with them. That, That was a grand slam. We just hit it off. Well, imagine if you felt that on every single presentation because you changed your style to fit them. Because you know what I'm talking about when you go on an appointment and everything's flowing and things are feeling good and you're like, man, this is easy. That's because you're presenting to someone that matches your style. And anytime we're on an appointment where it feels a little uncomfortable or maybe not as easy, that's because we're presenting someone to someone that doesn't communicate or think in our mind the way we do. What's wrong with this person? Why are they behaving this way? Why aren't they responding? Most people are excited when I present. That's because that's their method of communicating. 
So everybody knows the styles, but I'm going to do a quick kind of review on A, how to identify, B, how to adapt. Because quite frankly, adapting is more important, but you can't adapt until you know them. So if you would turn to a clean sheet of paper, and I want you to draw one line down the center, and I want you to draw one line across the middle. Full page down the center and one across the middle, like a big plus sign. And in the top left box, I want you to write the letter D. In the top right box, I want you to write the letter I. Beneath the letter I, in that bottom right box, I want you to write the letter S. And in the bottom left quadrant, the letter C for D-I-S-C. Now, sometimes people ask, well, how do I remember? You know, I hear people say, oh, I'm a high I, I'm a high C, I'm a high D. How do I remember, like, affiliating? What word could I attach to each one of those? So I'll give you a few words that will help you remember which these are, all right? So a high D, very simple, we would say driver, all right? Of course, there's other, you know, dominant. I mean, there's a lot of other traits, which is a whole other class, but to remember it, driver. The I is the influencer. How will we remember what the high I is? They're the influencer. They're the expressive. By the way, of the four personality styles, is the most likely to sell based on their personality because they have this upbeat, enthusiastic personality. The challenge with that particular style in many cases in working with agents through the years is that their time management and organization skills struggle and therefore, there is no interest in following a schedule or putting a business plan together unless they increase their level of versatility or have a coach holding them accountable. You know, it's like the butterfly effect. Oh, look, squirrel, all over the place. Hey, by the way, they all have pluses and minuses. The, the, the S, I would use a term as supportive. The high S is somebody who is very supportive, very amiable in their style. I say supportive because it matches the first letter. It helps me remember it. And then the C is very compliant, also known as the analytical. So at the top of your page, at the top of the plus sign, I want you to write the word fast, F-A-S-T, fast. At the bottom, I want you to write the word slow. On the right-hand side of your plus sign, I want you to write the word feel, F-E-E-L, feel. And on the left-hand side, I want you to write the word fact. Fact, F-A-C-T, fact. And so essentially what this quadrant is showing you is that the two at the top, the D and the I, they actually have something in common, and that is that they communicate, speak, make decisions, do things, take action quickly, faster than most people. So the D and the I, when in communication, are on the same page when it comes to speed of decision-making, speed of doing things. Where they differ is the D mostly does not make decisions based on emotion or feelings, where the I is the opposite. If you look at the bottom half of the grid, the C and the S, they speak, act, talk, tone, everything a little more slowly. And it not, it's not that one is right and one is wrong, that's just their preferred method of communication. So if you would now with your plus sign, draw an X in the center, one going across from the D to the S, one going across from the I to the C, with little arrows on the end, right? So just a cross in the center of that plus sign. Go from the I to the C, and then the D to the S, with two little, you know, a little arrow on the end. That is the polar opposites, right? The D and the S, opposites. The I and the C, opposites. So if I'm looking at my particular chart here, and I know just by taking the Tony Robbins disc test or based on what people have told me, if I'm a high C as a salesperson, and I'm going out and presenting to a high I, I am, the deck is already stacked against me unless I do two things. 
I increase my energy and enthusiasm and increase my rate of speech. So we train our agents on how to identify the four very quickly, which we usually identify it during the pre-qualifying script. Well, how do you identify it so fast? We just ask, would you please describe your home for me? One of the questions on the script. Well, aren't, aren't I listening for things about their home? No. I mean, you can write them down and make notes on them, but most cases, as you know, it makes no difference what they say. It's how they say it. Well, what does that mean? Well, if I'm communicating with the driver, and I don't know this yet, and I ask the question, would you please describe your home for me? The high D is probably going to say, well, what do you want to know? Three bedrooms, two baths? You, you, you're the expert. You should know it all. Right? The high analytical, the C, probably something like, well, we've got 13 inches of blown-in insulation, and we've used stainless steel nails, and we've got a 98% high-efficiency furnace. All right, I'm dealing with an analytical. So I'm listening for their personality style when I ask the question, would you please describe your home for me? So that way I can be better prepared for when I go to present. Because as I've said now probably five or six times, I have four different styles of presentation. So I know for myself, if I'm a higher energetic, higher enthusiasm, personality-based salesperson, this phrase will probably drive most of you crazy, but it's the reality if you want to appeal to the bottom half, you have to tone it down. Well, yeah, but that's who I am. That's me. That's why people like me. That's why I get contracts signed. You get contracts signed for people that like you who are like you. If they're not like you, the, bo the bottom two, you, come, you show up to an appointment with enthusiasm and energy and, and don't have things organized and put together be or you're speaking super fast or super loud, they think you're a sleazy, fast-talking salesperson. Or the contrary to that, if I'm at the bottom, I'm a high C or a high S, and I come in with low energy or average energy, and my rate of speech is pretty methodical, and I speak at the same tone, every, you know, I'm very monotone. If I'm presenting to a high D or a high I, they're going to think I'm slow or I'm stupid. So I have to consciously, if I'm one of those bottom two, I have to tone it up. I have to increase my energy and increase my enthusiasm in order for them to say this in their mind. That Jeff is just like me. Because when they say that in their mind, they will listen to what I have to say. So think about your next presentation and making it all about what you can do to get them to say that Dan is just like me. That Steve is just like me. That Mason is just like me. If I can get the consumer to say that in their mind, by just matching and mirroring their communication, I'm more likely for them to listen to what I have to say and get a contract signed. Or I can do what I've been doing and just do what's comfortable and what's been working and not see any difference in my sales each year. Because by the way, most of us, no matter what level we're at, we're probably losing 15, 20, 30 transactions a year from this alone, because we're not identifying quick enough who they are, A, and B, adapting to them. So you saw the opposites, right? So here's, how, by the way, here's how you know quickly without even taking the test. All right, so let me just give you some, you got, you got the box in front of you still, and the, okay. I'm gonna give you like five traits of each, which most of you guys know these, okay? The driver, just write these three, four, five words down for each. Dominant, forceful. Independent, strong-willed, loves action, insensitive, demanding, sometimes confrontational, sometimes arrogant. The high I, outgoing, spontaneous, exciting. Natural salesperson. Normally always late. No, I'm kidding. That's actually one of them. The one that's always running around. It's so amazing to me. You, you can always spot a high eye in a real estate office because they're always running around back and forth to the copier and, and stomping their feet, and you can hear them coming from a mile away, and it's like a tornado's going through, and they're working on their one deal. 
gregarious, outspoken. Values applause, sometimes too opinionated. The high S, very supportive, very amiable, very agreeable, very warm, very friendly. One good word for the high S is harmony, values harmony. Hates confrontation. Great listeners. The high C, you already heard me explain, compliant, analytical, punctual, perfectionist, systematic, overanalyze, very low on emotion. You know, they're the type that, well, we can put this thing together. Just look at, just look at the picture. No, 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 no. Give me the directions. Let's lay out all the parts. First, we're going to make sure we have all the parts. Count all the parts. We're going to double check that we have all the parts. Check it again just to make sure we have all the parts. Good, we have all the parts. We can go to step two. So when you look at those four, without even taking the disk test, here's how you identify who you are. Look at the four and the five or six traits of each. Which one of the four would you say you struggle with the most? Meaning, which one is just like, oh, I cannot figure this person out. I hate going on appointments with people like this. Which one of the four is that? All right, so put a star by that one, meaning the one that you struggle with the most or drives you the most crazy. Put a star by it. And now remember that X you drew through it? Follow that line right up to the other side. That's who you are. So if you put a star by an S, for instance, that would mean most likely you're a high D as your number one or number two trait. If you put a star by that analytical L, chances are you're a high I. So therefore, since we know who we are, and you just identified who your weakest is, I would do everything possible, and I know our coaches are working with our agents to do everything they can to develop more versatility and be better at communicating with people of the opposite style. It's always a good activity to do. Thank you for taking your time to join Jeff today on the Live Unreal with Glover U podcast to take the real estate self-assessment that begins the Glover U self system and have a member of Glover U get on a call with you to create an action plan to improve your score. Go to www.gloveru.com slash self. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe. Search for Live Unreal with Glover U on iTunes, Podbean, or Spotify and subscribe today. Until next time, remember, we have to learn to speak the customer's language. Thank you.